Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks here on my YouTube channel. My name is Caleb. Today I will be using this slab that I milled up myself last year to build a frame. This is a custom frame that I will be building for a client in Santa Barbara. I milled this wood up myself using a chainsaw and a small Alaskan chainsaw mill. If you're curious about how that uh, was done, go ahead and click the links above or down in the description. The wood sat outside for over a year and was on the side of my house that gets a lot of sun and so it was fully dry and I measured it with my moisture meter before getting started with this project. You can see here that the wood looks pretty rough, but later on in the project, you're gonna see how beautiful it becomes. The first step was to break down the slab into different sections that would be a bit more manageable uh, for creating the frame. Actually, I guess the very, very first step was to remove the bark. It came off pretty easy. I used a crowbar and a hammer to do this. It was pretty simple. After the bark was fully removed, I then began investigating the slab to find the crack that would be best to split the entire slab uh, at, and there is a crack that went down the entire length of the slab that I used, and uh, I just used my pry bar to uh, break the slab in half right at that crack. I did this so that the project that I will be making out of this piece of lumber will not be compromised by the crack that has naturally occurred following the milling of the wood. Uh, and I found that the rest of the wood that was on either side of the crack was extremely hard. This was really the only section that was compromised, so I went ahead and just played off the compromise, if that makes sense. But this did take a bit of elbow grease to make it snap in half, but eventually it did come, and you'll see here in a second that I cracked the entire slab right in half. Once the entire slab was split into two pieces, I went ahead and picked up the bark, threw the bark away. Actually, I believe I kept it for my yard. Then I pulled out the piece of tile work that I will be creating the frame for. This was provided by the client, uh, and that is why the overall dimensions needed to be custom. Apparently this tile mosaic was from a old structure or part of their home that they had to demolish, but they wanted to keep this Vista Del Mar section because it meant something to them. So before doing any cutting, I made sure to take a number of measurements of the piece that I would be making the frame for this Vista Del Mar piece. And I made sure to write them down in my phone and I made sure to check the measurements twice <laughs> so that uh, I didn't make a mistake. This is a pretty unique piece of tile work that was not completely square. And so it was good that I went ahead and took a number of measurements and wrote those measurements down uh, to use throughout the project. Once I had the measurements written down, I went ahead and took in one half section of the entire slab that will actually end up being the entire frame, which is awesome because I'll be able to use the other section for something else. I also went ahead and used a straight edge to pencil on one of the straight uh, flat edges that would be on the inside of the frame. I made sure to draw the line in terms of the length of the inside of the frame uh, and then I drew a couple 45 degree angles to get the overall length of the piece of wood so that I could go ahead and use my circular saw to break it down into a more manageable piece. I did the cutting with my circular saw on my bench and I made sure to use a couple pieces of scrap wood to lift the slab so that I wouldn't chop into my bench. Huh. Since I will be coming back to this piece of wood and cutting the 45 degree angles with my miter saw, I went ahead and freehand cut the line uh, with my circular saw. I didn't use a straight edge and it was fine.
the piece of oak started to clamp down onto the saw blade, started to pinch it. So I used a wedge on one side of the cut to uh, help finish it out. I guess that actually might be called a shim. After that, it was time to rip out the straight edge, clamp on straight edge that I have, and do a straight cut down one side of this board. It will be the inside face uh, of the frame, or one of them. If you have a track saw, that will make this process a whole lot easier uh, than using a clamp on straight edge and a circular saw. But the system works, and you'll see here in a second that I get a nice clean straight cut. I also made sure to clamp down the piece uh, so that when I was cutting it, it wouldn't move on me. And just like that, I had a nice straight edge that I could reference on my miter saw to make the 45 degree angle cuts. And the great thing is, is I was able to use both pieces, both that you can see right there. It's awesome. After that, I brought in the second piece and did the exact same thing. Made a straight line cut right down uh, the length of the piece of wood. Um, and I ended up with two pieces, and you can see here I am excited that it's working out. Woohoo. Now I am just about ready to invest in a track saw, and I've decided on the Festool TS75 EQ uh, because it has the deepest plunge cut that you could do, uh, or depth of cut. Uh, if you have another opinion, though, about what I should get, you should comment below. I've been using this circular saw combination with this straight edge that I actually got from Harbor Freight Tools and I wouldn't recommend it but it has actually paid off and uh, done me really good. The only issue is that it's uh, time consuming lining it all up before a cut. And once again just like that I cut the slab into two separate pieces with a straight edge that I'll be able to take over to my miter saw to reference uh, to cut 45 degree angle cuts uh, for the frame. Before actually cutting the pieces down with miters on the ends, I wanted to go ahead and take out all four pieces. Uh, into my driveway where I could lay them down and lay the piece of tile work down to make sure that I was uh, thinking about the order of the cuts between the four different pieces and the position of each of those boards correctly. I knew which side of each of the boards would be facing inward, but I didn't know the boards that would be on the long side versus the short side. So I lined them up and then I ended up switching them around and found the order that looked nice to me. Once I had a pretty good idea of the position of each board as it relates to the tile work, I went ahead and moved over to my miter saw to do some cutting. Have you ever attached your hose to your vacuum on the wrong outlet? Yep, that's what just happened. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Once I got that all sorted out, I went ahead and used a piece of scrap 2x4 to do a test 45 degree angle cut to make sure that my miter saw was all lined up and then it was time to do the first cut. I made my measurements on the straight edge of the piece of oak that will be the inside length of the piece of wood and so the miters would extend uh, outward to the ends of this piece of wood and then I did the cut and it was a little scary. Miters are scary. But if you make a mistake with miter cuts, there's usually a way that you can fix them, uh, which I actually ended up having to do later on in the project for one or two of the miters. Once I had one of the pieces cut, I used it to mark the second piece that would be the exact opposite piece 
uh, when it comes to the frame. So in this case, it was the top and the bottom piece of the frame, and I wanted to ensure that they were exactly the same, even though the tile work itself was not completely square. I'll be hiding that with a recess. I'll show you how I did that in a later part of this series. I wanted to take a moment to show you exactly how beautiful this Los Olivos Valley Oak wood is. It's extremely dense wood and it has a very beautiful grain pattern. From there it was time to take the next two pieces of wood to cut the side sections of the frame with 45 degree angles. And like I did with the first pieces, the two pieces for the top and bottom, I made sure to cut the pieces for the sides uh, to be exactly the same so that the entire frame is fully square when I line it all up. I will be releasing additional parts to this project uh, and showing you the further steps on how to complete the frame. I really appreciate you watching today's episode, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon next to it so that you stay notified uh, when I release new project videos. And if you haven't, also go check out my Instagram and my TikTok. I have some fun content on there. I also have a website if you want to look at that, and uh, reach out if you're interested in a custom project. Uh, or if you are just curious about a, uh, a tool or a technique or a piece of wood that I use in one of my videos. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.